Good day everyone, so enjoy some monohydro with Farina here in the background whilst we talk a bit about why the lore in Genshin Impact could potentially be holding the game back. It's obviously not the only reason why I would think that the game is being held back from its true potential, but it's the one I really want to discuss in for today. So let me just sketch it out very, very quickly. Why can't we get more character skins? Well, the answer is lore. If there is not a unique character event tied with a specific character skin, then, well, we are just not going to get it. And this, to me, is obviously a very big contrast to what Hoyo has done in the other games, most notably Honkai Impact, where basically a character comes out, like a five-star character like Zila, uh, within six months she's got a brand new skin, a skin with fancy animations, like it changes the voice lines, dialogue, there's so much premiumness into it, and the best part is, you can farm for it as an F2P, you don't need to pay a freaking cent in the shop. And that is what I would love Genshin to have done. I would have loved them to include a token system whereby if you complete certain endgame activities, be it TCG or the Spiral Abyss, you accumulate skin tokens very slowly, but you accumulate them over time and you redeem them in the shop for character skins. But we can't have any of this because, well, of lore reasons. We can't have any new game in-game modes because, well, I don't know, the game, the Genshin team didn't think of enough lore reasons to give us more in-game combat content, but they sure as hell broke all of the character um, suspension and disbelief and all of these sorts of things when they introduced TCG by absolutely retconning it into the game because the Hoyo CEO probably thought that this would be a fun pet project and there were no lore crafting channels or whatever on YouTube that could have even predicted TCG. Why? Because it was just tacked on into the game it broke the immersion by literally having all the characters ooh and ah over it which is something that even stood in contrast to some of their personalities which is just like why are we breaking our own lore and yet when the community since day one wanted more combat content wanted more character skins we're just not giving them anything that to me is the problem and you see this also in terms of the character ability so with Farina she's got mastery over Numa and Osia. Why? Well, basically, we're not actually even given an explicit reason why, but we can summarize that because Nuvalet's now the Hydra Sovereign Dragon and he granted the vision to Farina and he's got full control over Numa and Osia, therefore Farina being the first wish, vision holder being granted, um, a, a Hydra vision also now has complete control over it, despite the fact that Nuvalet still doesn't have control of, in terms of his combat kit over both allies. So you have this weird law situation where, you know, it's 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 kind of like we we tack on abilities just to sell new characters and then we break the law. Uh, but remember, you can't have whatever you want as 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 a Genshin community because we don't have a good law reason for including it. It's just. It's just so bizarre. I appreciate that the Genshin dev team want to have a tie-in with everything going back into the lore, but with so many characters and casts and minor details, you're just going to breed inconsistencies like it's, it, like it's nothing. And the problem is, is that you can't be, if you can't be consistent with when lore applies to the type of content you're offering your players, then just drop that requirement. Just say, you know what, we are going to be smart about it. We're going to give people the ability to earn new skins and not all these skins need to have a law reason or some reason why they're in, they're in the game. Just give it to the players. We can make up reasons why we think this might be appropriate in the game. Like, we don't need Hoyo to dictate every single element of this game and i think that's really what they're trying to do they they're not being engaging they're not engaging enough with the uh, players and so on and that is my big criticism and i've noticed this idea or tie into with lore um because i've been looking at a lot of the character demos that they've been putting up on youtube and one of the things that's kind of obvious is that they'll tell you 
Kokomi has this ability to reduce swimming stamina because she grew up as a young girl on Watatsumi Island with this life and the sea and she can like hold her breath infinitely underwater. Uh, by the way, um, her swimming passive doesn't work entirely in Fontaine. Uh, she can't dive out of the water and she gets no benefit from being under the water despite her lore and story being very much supportive of that, which is just like... What what what's the Genshin team doing? Why is Beidou's swimming passive not working in Fontaine? Why can't Mona have any benefit when she's clearly touted as being a very good swimmer? It's just like oh, the inconsistencies here just like really hurt me. It's it's the same with Farina as well. We're told that she reduces these inochromatic abilities underwater because all the world is her stage, to quote Dainsleeve, and it's like well, what's got that got to do with anything? Even her summons, her, her free summons, the crab, the um, octopus and the seahorse have got nothing to do with aquatic marine life. If you read the story on the Salon members, they actually tie in into one of the Fontaine world quests. They've got nothing to do with aquatic life like we have with Kokomi and her references. Like in, in, in Watatsumi Island, you have literally floating jellyfish in the air. So you kind of understand how that ability works and how it ties in with Kokomi. But just the members of the Salon, whilst a very interesting story, has got nothing to do with underwater. It's got nothing to do with giving you the ability to walk on water. It's just like they, the Genshin team is so inconsistent with what is a good law reason and just like tagging, tagging on all of these features and abilities and TCG just so it suits their agenda. And the fact that no one's calling Genshin out on this just makes me mad. So that's why I'm calling it out. You might think it's silly, but to me it really is a reason why this game is not reaching its potential. Why? Because... Genshin is not listening to us, the players. That is the big thing. There, there are all the excuses in the book not to give you what you want and to only fit the agenda of whoever is making all these bad decisions. But that is my view on it. Let me know what you think. You might disagree or agree. I honestly welcome you to just write that down in the comment section. Cheers.